So the, the premise is I want to destroy Christianity to its core because Christianity has destroyed oh, yeah. our people. Yeah, and you right. know this. Yeah. It, it's, it's evident. All right. We're going to start with Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Yes, sir. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. But thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. All right. So it says, for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. So the word holy means to be separate, means to be set apart, cleansed. Okay. That's holy. All right, read that again. But thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He says the Lord, had, the Lord God chose us to be a special people to himself. All right, there's 18 nations listed in this Bible. But out of 18 nations, he chose one nation that he's dealing with. Right. That's what he just said right there. Keep going. Above. Hold on. He chose one nation to be what? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now Christianity tells you that everybody's equal. That's what I was taught in church. I was in church for 28 years. I was taught that God loves everybody. Christ wasn't a man of color. And everybody's going to be saved. All you got to do is believe in the Lord. If you believe in the Lord, you believe in his word, right? What his word just say? His word just says he has a special people above every other nation. All right, there is no equality. Is that it? All right, so we got that so you understand that there is no equality. We're going to break that down even further. Now go to Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Like I said, my job today, I'm glad you're listening. This is the, this is the most high. A lot of people walk past this for hours. Oh, I got something to do. I ain't got no time for that. I'm out here with my family, whatever, whatever. No sweat to us. No sweat to us. It doesn't matter. Right. But you, the most important thing that you know from the jump is Christianity. It's slavery to our people. What is what? What did Christianity teach us? It taught us that let us, let us that was right. House, yeah. That's a slaughterhouse. Yeah. It taught you to be under your oppressor. It didn't yeah. teach you that you were the best. People say that you weren't the best. That's what they taught you. Right. That you were nothing. Right. That you was a nigger. That your skin was ugly. That your hair was was what's called kinky and disgusting and hard to maintain. That's what your oppressor taught you. That's what these other nations teach you. They laugh at us. We're a laughing stock to the nations. Okay. Then you go a white man with blue eyes, right? That doesn't make sense because the Bible says contrary, right? Now read this. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Now remember, what we're doing is we're reading out the Bible. The whole point of me right now is to break down Christianity to its core. Break it down, uproot it, get it out your mind, okay? We're here to uplift our people because if we don't do it, nobody else will. You know that. Teach. You know that. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Okay, okay. Read that again. Now listen again. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Who's he speaking to? Children of Israel. It's, it's simple, right? The, the children of Israel are listed on this sign right here. It's you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The Lord God put you above every other nation. That's where you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to know how to work. You're not supposed to know how to have to go get a job and work 12 hours a day, come home tired, have to deal with a, a, a loud woman, or have to deal with kids that are, that are growing up in an oppressive school system. You're not supposed to deal with that. You're supposed to be above everybody. Read that again. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, okay. against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Because we descend from the same people that God led out of Egypt. The same people that Moses split that seed for, 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 we descend from them. That's right. That's why I said you you trace way back to that. That, that. that blood that runs through you, that ran through Christ. And even further back, that same blood went through Moses, went through Aaron, all the prophets of old. We are a family. That's right. This is not a magical spirit, like a little magical uh, spooky book. This is our history book. That's why I say it's only for our people. Our history is found in this Bible. Because in, in, in school when I grew up, I was taught that our history started when we were taking off ships. Yeah, we were taking off ships, a butt naked with chains on. That's all we know. But we have history way before that. We predate that. All right? Give me uh, Joel chapter uh, 2, verse 27. Now remember, God says he's only dealing with our people. Did I finish that up? Go back to that real quick. I went too fast. Uh, three one. There we go. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Saying what? You only have I known. He said, you only have I known, Israel. Go ahead. Of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you 
for all your iniquity. He said out of all the families of the earth, he's only dealing with us. You just heard that from the Bible. Now, if you, if you have any questions or say, oh, I don't believe that, just ask me and we can pull up on your phone or whatever. Everything we're reading is coming out the same Bible that everybody else has, okay? Now, go to Joel chapter 2, verse 27. This is the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. Hey, my brother up. right here, you go to church? Good. All praises. Don't you ever go back. That's right. Hey, get this man a flyer real quick before he goes. Hey, so, hey, uh, Amir. Amir, get this man a flyer before he goes. Check that flyer out, bro. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. This is the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. He says, I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. I'm the Lord your God. And none else. None else. How many scriptures have we went over so far to tell you that there's no equality, that, that God is not dealing with everybody? Right. That's too many scriptures. But my thing is, if everybody is reading the same Bible, why are they not hearing this? God said he's not dealing with every nation. He's only dealing with the nation of Israel. That's it. It's plain and simple. And you can see it too. Did I finish that up? Let's go. And people shall never be ashamed. We're not going to be ashamed. God made 18 nations, but he only has one nation he's dealing with. Give me Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4, I think it's 23, I believe. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 4, verse 23, because we teach the Bible. We teach the love of God, the love of Jesus. That's why we're out here. We don't teach lies. All right? That's right. Let's go. This at any time that you feel that you don't, you're confused or you think we're lying or you don't, you're confused about something, just ask and we'll, we'll show you out the Bible. Like I said, what, what I'm preaching, everything I'm saying can be found in here. That's something that your pastor will not do. 423, yes sir. Exodus chapter 4, verse 23. This is the book of Exodus chapter 4 and verse 23. Hey sis, hey sis, check this out real quick. Check this sign out real quick. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if I refuse to let him go. I'm sorry, 22. 22. Check this out, bro. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh. Now remember, this is Moses at the time we was in captivity to the Egyptians, because we are not Egyptians. We're not the same people. Right. Remember, the Egyptians had us in captivity, slaves in Egypt, okay? Read that again. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son. Read it again. Stop in the comments. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Israel is his son, his firstborn. That's why we say he's only dealing with Israel. When you Do you have a son? Not yet, but when you have that son, that's going to be your image. And what does the first son always get? If you have a whole bunch of sons, what does that first son get? He get that inheritance. You see the movies and everything. That when, that, when, the, uh, when the father dies, he's a king. Who rises up to take his, uh, his throne? That firstborn. That's right. God said we're his firstborn. So think about this. God created everything, right? He created the whole world and everything in it, right? So us being his firstborn, we get a piece of that. It's simple. That's why he says we are above all nations. It's too simple to understand. Now give me, give me um real quick Revelation 22. I'm gonna tear it down real quick before we hit some laws. Revelation 22, verse 14. And I'm going to show you all this stuff to break down Christianity and then we're going to get to what's going to build our people back up. That's why we're out here. We're going to tear down Christianity and any other false doctrine. And then from there, we're going to build our people up to be kings again on this earth like the Lord said we are. Right. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So God said the blessed ones are going to be the ones that do his commandments. All right. That they may have right to the tree of life. The tree of life is heaven. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Read that part again, the last part. And may enter in through the gates. Gates, plural. Gates. All right, to get into the city of heaven. Give me to our Revelation 21. Because in church, you hear a lot that the uh, that one golden gate. That, no, that was it, a pearly, pearly gate? gate. Yeah, pearly that gate. one gate. <laughs> church tells you there's one gate. But we just read out the Bible, there's gates, plural. All right, so that's another lie just cast down. Read this. Book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 12. Now we're going to read the importance of these gates. And had a wall, great and high, and had 12 gates. Now, most most likely when you build a wall that's great and high, and in the movies in the old times, what are, what are high walls meant for? Yeah, in, in, think about it. If you build a, a high gate or a high wall to keep people, keep people out, right? It's common sense. Let's go. And at the gates... 12 angels. So you hear there's 12 gates with 12 angels. All right? Go ahead. 
and names written thereon. So on each gate there's a name written thereon. Go ahead. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Bro, the case, each gate has a name of one of the, of one of the tribes of Israel on it. 12 tribes, 12 gates. Who's, who can only make it into the kingdom of heaven? Who? Israel. That's it. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.